microphone here. We're imprinting this in our mind here, right? Yep. yep. Putting that back on the wall. Get there. And... So that was much, my best one of the day. So much better swing. Hey guys, thanks for watching Be Better Golf. Take a second and click the subscribe button. Today I'm here with the inventor and the owner of the Golf Stick Pro, Jay. How's it going, Jay? Good, man, how are you? Good. Jay and I came out here because uh, some people from Be Better Golf have gotten the Golf Stick Pro and have asked me for a Be Better Golf specific warm up, warm up for the Golf Stick Pro, which is just like three minutes long, and then the Golf Stick Pro workout, which is something you do three times a week to build speed. It's been, Jay, uh, scientifically studied that the principle behind the Golf Stick Pro will make people faster. Is that right? Absolutely. What's the idea? Why does it work? Or really, the, the idea is this. We, um, we did a lot of testing, and we wanted people to be able to have something that was the same within 20% of the weight of a golf club, right? Mm -hmm. So one thing, there's a principle of specificity. So kin kinesthetically, you have to be accelerating something that's similar in weight to the thing that you want to use, right? Mm -hmm. So a golf club, there's a lot of training aids out there that are really light or really heavy. And what we found was is that that, that, that learning didn't translate well, very well into swinging an actual golf club. So we wanted to be the right weight. So the Golf Stick Pro is. And then the next thing we did is we thought about where we distributed the weight. And that's something that you notice with the light and heavy end. So you've got a really heavy end and a really light end. What that it does is it actually counterbalances the Golf Stick yep. so that you're able to accelerate it faster than oh, you would yeah. a regular golf okay. club, right? Because there's some weight in the handle. Because the weight's in the handle. Yeah and not at the at the end you're accelerating. Right, right. So you're able to actually generate what we would call overspeed or swing faster. Mm -hmm. It's similar in the principle that that uh, sprinters run downhill. Yeah. Right? So it's similar to that principle that you actually start to feel, okay, this is what my body feels like when I go fast, mm -hmm. and your body actually learns to repeat that motion. Yeah, the, the white side, when you're swinging with that end out, that's the lighter side, and then the red set side is a little heavier. Right. Doing almost all of our speed work on, on we're doing all of our speed work really on, yeah. on, on the white side, right? Started to do all of our speed work with it. Uh, the more we tested, the more we talked to people, and, uh -huh. and we, we looked at the, the data that just the, the light end out is the way to go. The heavy end now we use specifically for strength training. And like range of motion? Range of motion or rhythm. So okay. rhythm and gotcha. timing also, gotcha. there's a lot to that. You know, you, you can see all sorts of folks all the way through the history of golf that used a heavy club for rhythm uh, and range of motion. And so we still want to be able to do that. That's what the heavy end's for. Mm -hmm. You can use it a little bit to start to feel stuff. Like you and I talked about, you have a little bit of a regrip at the top. Yeah, when you have yeah. the heavy end out, you're able to feel that a little bit better. Yeah. So Keep it in control. Okay, so uh, hold on just a second, Jay. I'm going to see if I have this thing with me. Aha! All right. One of the things that I recommend people get is this uh, swing radar. You know, I talked to one guy, like a scientist guy, and I, t I said to him, how important is it to, to monitor your swing speed? Right. Like, that whether you're getting faster? And he said, you know, we studied that because they thought it was going to be, like, crucial to, to have this the feedback of it. It wasn't really that big of a difference. No, I think the I don't think you need to use it all the time. Right. I use mine occasionally. It's like the scale, yeah. right? Yeah. You get a pretty good understanding of how much you weigh by how well your pants fit. Right. So when you're on the golf course, you're going to tell if you're getting faster or slower because you're because of yeah, how yeah. far the ball goes. This is just nice for me to have like a data point mm -hmm. because then I then I work harder, right? Mm -hmm. Because I want to get that reward of oh, okay, my speed went up. But I, that's more what I use it for. So I don't use it like I would. I use that workout about three times a week that we that you have uh, we filmed earlier, uh, and then I'll check the speed maybe once every three or four weeks. So oh, okay. Gotcha. I don't check it that all the time. It's great to have though. Yeah. So one one thing. So you, there, uh, there's an Amazon link if you if you want to get this thing. You get a Christmas gift as well. Yeah. Just like the Golf Stick Pro. So uh, one thing that I wanted to ask you, Jay, was for some reason I'm able to get this going very fast right and i have some kind of throttle that slows me down with the actual golf club right because if this is like is it 10 percent lighter than my golf club it's, the weight a, it's actually a little bit heavier than your golf club so the transfer it should oh, okay. transfer oh, okay. there, there's there's little it's normally a technique issue okay gotcha. more than it is a lack of speed issue so, so we'll we'll, we'll work test on that, that right now right. we're gonna so we're gonna talk today about the transference of you're gaining more speed you're you're doing uh, speed training, you're doing stuff like that, but we want to put it on the golf club. So we're going to see how fast I can get this Golf Stick Pro going now. Yeah. One twenty-two. One twenty-four. One twenty-seven. Come on, Jay. Let's do one thirty. Let's go. 
131. All right. I don't want to go much faster than that. 131 is plenty. So, because my, my thinking was, if this is 10% lighter, which you just told me actually is not, is not even, but if it is, why aren't I just swinging at temper, swinging this at 122, you know, 10% less than that or well, the whatever. Thing that, the, the thing to keep in mind is, is that it is overall heavier. And that's, that's the, the, really the thing that's important is you're moving something that's heavier, faster, uh -huh. which is really the definition, the distribution definition of, of power, weight but it's the fact different. that there's so much weight in the, in the red end uh -huh. that it's counterbalanced that you actually move it in the correct motion. Oh. Does that make sense? Okay. So, so what the most Gothic people Pro is helping me sequence it better. Absolutely. Okay. So what most people tend to do is they, they leak power in two places. One was when they wind up uh -huh. and one is when they start down. Mm. So your tendency and most people's tendency is, is to start to leak the angle of their hands, right? Yeah. And, and let the club head kind of drop or droop. Uh, when they actually swing a golf club. So you have to hold the angle just like you do with the Golf Stick Pro. That's why the counterbalance is there. So Jay's been a teacher for years as well. And from your eye as a teacher, you're saying that the difference you see in when I swing this, you know, trying to hit it hard like I was doing in the warm up to this video, and when I swing the Golf Stick Pro, is is this re-gripping or looseness in the top? Yes. You don't see that in the golf stick so, when I so, do that? So basically the thing that I would say to you, that's a brand new golf glove, right? So yeah. if you if you let me see the palm of your hand right now, uh -huh. this is a fun drill, everybody should do this at home, is that this is totally unworn, right? It's yeah. brand new. Yeah. Look at this in a month uh -huh. and you'll, you'll see a lot of wear here. Yep. And that's because you let the golf club move around a bunch. Uh -huh. So what your tendency is, and I see this a lot, is, is you get to the golf top of your golf swing, right? Mm -hmm. You release the golf club a little bit, it droops. Mm -hmm. you, you think that you're actually maintaining the angle, you're not, mm -hmm. because the next thing you do is cast it away, right? So that droop and this is kind of sending some energy there, right. and then by the time you're at impact, you're... Right, okay. so you wasted a bunch of speed there. You didn't naturally wind it up and then unwind it. You wound it up, released some of it, uh -huh. and then unwound it, right? Yeah. So if I was pulling a rope from the top, yeah. The first thing I would do is not straighten that angle. No, no, no. Because then I don't have any power. If it was a rope, you'd be here and you'd go. Right. Yeah. Well, I tell people all the time, like if you had a sledgehammer and you were trying to bust something on the ground, right? You would get here and then you would rotate with your entire body. Yeah. But what most golfers do, and you're and you're typical of this, you yeah. know, even though you're a much better, you have a much better understanding of the golf swing, just athletically, they get to the top, they start to down with uh -huh. the, the club head yeah. as opposed to starting down with the hands. Uh -huh. And that's why you've started to see a movement towards counterbalancing in, in golf equipment okay. and shafts mm -hmm. over the last few years is because you're trying to get people to start down correctly. Yeah. But it's really better to just train it with something like the Golf Stick Pro. And transfer it. Right. And, the, and, and then you can start to transfer that learning into your actual golf swing. So let me grab the, the golf stick. So give us a drill. If somebody has self-diagnosed themselves as somebody who, and you can kind of see this if you take a slow motion video of it, if you start to see this little kind of like, almost like you're on the monkey bars. Yeah, if you, we, if you wear out golf gloves, uh -huh. right? Yeah. That's the first thing that I would say is yeah. I see a lot of people out there. If you looked at my hands, I don't look like um, that there's a lot of calluses and stuff like that. Yeah. And I swing a lot and, and I hit a lot of golf balls, yeah. but that's because I have a secure right. hold of the golf club. So the first thing I would say is if you notice you wear out golf gloves. Yeah, in that famous picture of Alex Noren's bleeding hands. Yeah. There were, it, was, it was here and here and here. There was there no, was no, no blood coming out of this part. Yeah. There's no touching here. It's always right. here, right? Yeah. So that's the first thing I would say is if you wear out a lot of golf gloves, yep. or if it feels like there's, there's any sort of movement at all at the top, you have to realize you're holding something that's fo almost four feet long, yeah. right? So any slight movement in your hands is a is a very large movement at the club head. Okay. So what's a, what's a way we can train that out? Because so, instinctively, I'm doing it with the golf stick. Okay. The, yeah. the the most important thing in any drill like that is you want to create weakness because weakness is going to cause you to to really notice things you wouldn't notice otherwise. Okay. So. So let's go ahead and drop the golf stick and grab your driver. Yep. Since we're trying to learn, we, you know how to go real fast with the golf stick, and we're going to translate that to the driver. Yes. So I want you to hold the golf club with your left hand, just left hand only. Yeah. And I want you to wrap your right hand over the left hand. So I want you to go oh, ahead. Like there there yeah. you go, just like this. Mm -hmm. And you can put this on top, however it makes you feel comfortable. Yeah. And I want you to squeeze with the right hand so you keep it on there. Yep. And I want you to take a couple practice swings where you turn to the top and then pause for a sec. Okay. You can't release it now. And if you did, you would notice it because you don't have... Oh, yeah. Like, it feels like it's going to break your thumb if you do that. Yeah. yeah. It's going to break your thumb or 
It's going to fall into that V between your thumb and your palm. So suddenly you went from a guy who, who, who had a lot of sloppiness at the top of his golf swing to a guy who has none. So really so much of all the stuff that we do training wise, it's just to create an imbalance yeah. so that you compensate for that imbalance yeah. by correcting your movement. Yeah, some awareness you didn't have before, right? Yeah. You create a new understanding. So for right-handed golfers, the left hand with the right hand overlapped for, for left-handed golfers, vice versa. Yeah. And I also noticed there seems to be some kind of connection between the sloppiness and, and turn. Yeah. Like if I stop turning, this thing really puts a lot of pressure there and it makes it want to do this. If I can keep my turn going. There's absolutely a, a tendency the to there? substitute yeah. hand motion for body rotation. Uh, okay? okay. So if you think about it, let me borrow your driver sure. for a second. So if you think about it, you can sit here. Um, I think we all have this, this idea of what a golf swing looks like, yeah. right? So you, you have an idea, and mine, mine tended to be Tiger Woods for a long time, or Adam Scott, or one of those type guys, right. or Davis Love. I would think about this beautiful top of backswing position. The problem was, is athletically, I can't get in those positions. So a really good check for people is to just kind of get set up in a good golf position and set the golf club on the on their shoulder blade. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to rotate as far as I can, and then I push my hands up and back. That's my perfect top of backswing position. That is so much shorter than I go to. Right. Just because I, I, I collapse this angle a lot. Huh? Right. Yeah. So athletically, that's what I can do. Yeah. Right? Based on my current level of flexibility, my current level of mobility, I can go to there. So now there's going to be some movement after that because you've got some energy being translated. Yeah, some momentum, yeah. But, but that's where you should be trying to get to. Okay. And if you can't, if you can't go as far as you want, then there's drills to do, right? Oh, right. But the reality is, is that most people have this idea, okay, I want to get the golf club up here. Yeah. And as soon as they do that, the only way they can go from where they can actually go to where they want to go is to go like this. So let it, let, yeah. let the club go. Let the club go. And then Flop once it. I let the club go, all sorts of bad things happen. All right. That makes sense? Yeah. So intellectually, it makes sense. Let's see if, if uh, feel. So if first I can do check it. it. Yeah. So the first thing you're going to do, you've got, I've given you two drills. So let's, let's yeah. go ahead and go back to, um, so the, this is an athletic motion drill. So this is something you just do when you're hitting balls over and over again. The other thing is, is an understanding. So the way your mind works is you, is you buy into things with emotion. Yeah. And so that's gonna create that emotional sensation for you or like, okay, I understand how this works. And the other one is you justify with logic. So I want you to see your top of backswing position. So let's check that again. Yeah. And then I want you to just, just get into that position when you make a driver swing. Okay, so from there, see uh, you're tilted kind of a little bit awkwardly. So you wanna go here. Okay, gotcha. Because as soon as I tilt back here, I'm in trouble, yep. right? Let me, let me start from scratch here, Jay. Right. Here. And just yep. turn. Don't Left shoulder over your right yep. foot, basically. There you go. That's it. That's you. You probably don't believe that, right? That's all you got. Yeah. Yeah. So now what I want you to do is hit a golf ball, get to that position, and then go the other way. Uh, are we doing a little bit of like a pause at the top? You at first you could. Okay. But ultimately, I just want you to kind of envision your top of backswing position and go so through just it. Just kind of before you hit it, get here. Think I want to print that in my mind, right? Yeah. And then go through. You hit it much more solidly than your other warm-ups, right? Oh, yeah. I can always make you go faster, but I need to first understand what my constraints are. No, that felt like 70%, and that was 108 club head speed. Right. So that's, that's pretty good. Right. So, so how, the, how, how did I do as far as feeling real? Like, between this and then where I actually got to, was I pretty matched up there? Yeah, you were very matched up. Okay, good. Yeah. Now what, Jay? Now, I, the, the goal is is to, to repeat that movement enough that you get really good at it. So go ahead and set it on your shoulder blade, turn to there, and then now set it, take a little snapshot in your muscle memory, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then go back to center. Now go ahead and hit one. So I'm gonna, because I move my feet. That's where I wanna be. Yeah. And then from there, I'm gonna accelerate fast through the ball. So much better. More in control right. in the transition. So yeah. you're going to hit the ball further. You have plenty of speed. Yeah, that, was, one, that was 116, that one. You've generated a lot of speed by, by doing all the drills, right? Right. So the, we, we build speed in the backyard or in our practice sessions, right? Wherever our practice sessions yeah. may be. And then we build technique yeah. by this type of drill. And that's how we're able to take that golf stick 
pro speed to the golf course. Yeah, that's why I really like this video we're doing and I wanted to do it because I really have increased my potential. Like oh, yeah. Golf Stick Pro, I was in 125 or something with it. Now, now if I'm, I've gotten as high as almost one, like 139. Yeah. But I like this transference video because because now I I didn't know that about how the that extra weight is is kind of because kind of the weight's there now. So like I wouldn't wobble this. Right. Okay. So again, Jay. So we're going to try to build a little speed now? So or? yeah, so what I want you to do is go ahead until you get it. So it's going to take you a while, right? So you That's need fine. anywhere between 3,000 and 6,000 good repetitions to build a new habit, right? Yeah. So it's that 10,000 hour rule uh, uh, extrapolated. Right. So that's what you want to do is keep working on that top of backswing. And then just go fast through the hitting area. You know, Don yeah. Trahan had an amazing saying and he would always just say that the bang is on this side, right? Yeah, show that face on. So that so th so we're really looking at all the speed is going this way, right? So the problem is, is people are so worried about generating speed that they go back really yeah. fast, mm -hmm. and then they get really sloppy at the top, and then they've got to figure out a way to get back to impact properly, yeah. as opposed to getting to a good solid backswing position, yeah. and then accelerating from there. Well, that's the thing we're working on today. Is, is like yeah. a, a end result. It's still the, just as much shoulder turn as I had before. Yeah. But the club's going back less, and I feel like. If I took it back only this far, I feel like I would have to rush to build some speed, but you're saying you don't have you don't to. don't have to. Okay. I mean, Tony Finau's, you know, he's doing it one Tony Finau is a fantastic here. example. Yeah. John Rahm as well. John Rahm. Okay. So we're going here. We're imprinting this in our mind here, right? Yep. yep. Putting that back on the ball. Get there and... So that was much, my best one of the day. So much better swing. So the mechanics are much 115. better. One fifteen. Yeah. Easy one fifteen. Easy yeah. one fifteen. Yeah. So again, you're not you're not able to yet look to run that that motion at full speed because you just learned it. It's just like learning a new play, right? When you were you were right. in high school or, or last time you were in right. A, right. Right now, it's very it's very this and this right. rather than. Right, Dang. and you'll get to the point right. where you own that and you understand that right. position, and then you can use it. Mm -hmm. But 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 that's a really important people thing that people don't know to do. Like most golf pros are not going to go out there and tell you, okay, let's go ahead and let's see where you can go. Where's your top of backswing? Mm -hmm. And that's an important thing for your viewers to kind of understand is, is yeah. what their parameters are. Well, let's talk about that because if somebody's watching this, like my friend Michael or, or other guys that are that are uh, Michael's not a good example because he's flexible, but other guys that are that are now like late 60s to 70s and beyond and let's say they do this test and they're only getting to about here right and they feel like they're they they could get more if they could get a little bit closer to here yeah they could get more distance so what's a good thing way we can use the golf stick pro to get like more flexibility and more range of motion so that we can increase our potential for speed Great question. I'm going to use your golf stick because again, yeah. I, I kind of preset the other one for, uh, we got a little fun drill to do here in a second, but um, so that's a great question. So the first thing you want to do is know where you are, right? So that's the first thing I would say is, is that measure this. That's important is, is, is using this to measure your speed every now and then you want to measure this. So, so get some place in your house where you can get an idea in front of the mirror in the bathroom or whatever. Your wife will think you're a really cool dude if you do this in front of the bathroom and just get a, an idea. I mean, of, I'm doing it at Target. I'm doing it at the, every, I'll do it. I, I'm I mean, doing it everywhere. I do, I do it anywhere. I, 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 I'll do this anywhere. I don't care. Right. The other thing you can use is like your shadow, like my shadow's directly oh, yeah, behind good. me. So I can see, I can do it a bunch of different ways, but get an idea where you are first thing, okay? Yeah. And then the best drill I found for quickly improving that is just gonna be to hold both ends. Okay. Right? So here I'm going to go hold both ends and I'm going to try to turn this back as far as I can. I want this angle to get past 90 degrees for sure, right? Yeah. So again, if, if, if they're watching me from this angle, I've got my arms on the plane that my driver would be on. Yeah. But I'm, I'm definitely trying to make sure that if I had a line here kind of inside of my right foot, I want to make sure that I get past that and then just turn as far as you can and then work back through. So would you like kind of like put a club yep. or something like that? Yardstick, club, whatever, you know. Right. 
So I'm here, I'm trying to get past this. Uh -huh. You'll notice that good players, they can get you know, 120, 130 degrees. They can maybe even get even further. You could probably get even further than that. Mm -hmm. But I wanna go ahead and turn there and I wanna hold it. And I wanna try to turn a little further and then I'm gonna hold it, try to turn a little further. Don't hurt yourself. Yeah, just holding it in that position when we were doing the warm up, when I was, tr I went a little slower than kind of my yep. resonance. And that, you start shaking a little bit, like it, it's, an interesting workout yeah and you're as your body warms up your body temperature warms up you're going to really start to be able to turn a little further but you'll just gradually over time you're going to get more flexible you can do all sorts of different stretching things hamstring core and all that sort right. of stuff but this is a good place to start yeah okay all right okay to... so know that position know that top of back swing where's my top of back swing okay push your, push your hands back more than up okay there you go. Flatten it just a little bit. There you go. Good. Yeah, That's get, you right yeah get it on the golf plane. Get it on the plane, bit. yep. So I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. There you go. Perfect. Good. So you want to get Ooh, there. That's and wide. Okay, let's try that. Wide is good. Oh, oh that's great. So much better. A little wider there? Yeah. Yeah, 116. And that's like, I can tell once I can get that. That'll be, that'll be 120 when I can, when I'm on a par five, because if I can get the resonance of it into it as well with yeah. that. Well, now you're using your big muscles. You're not your hands and arms. So not only that, but, but we, you know, we don't have the track man here, but if we did your, your, your smash factor would be going up. Okay. So ball speed would be, so ball speed would yeah. be up from those, those other yeah. swings because you're more efficient right now. You can All right. So now we're just going to try to hit it the hardest heck to end this video. And, and again, same top of back swing. That's your top of back swing. So it's like a challenge. It's like how fast can I swing it, but only from there. Right. Gonna turn to there and then accelerate all the way through the golf ball. Good. All right. So that's. I'm gonna give you one more drill, and we yeah. talked about this before. So one sixteen so again. That's so good. These are all translation drills, right? So yes. So one of the reasons the I'm golf stick pro to, for me is was such an important tool as I as I kind of went around and talked to all the people that I knew in the golf business about what they wanted and they wanted people to be able to take something from training and translate it well into actual playing and, and practicing right That's the name and of so the game. it should feel like a golf club it should look like a golf club somewhat the training aid that you're using so it was really important for me to build a, a, a training aid like that and I think the golf stick pro did that so we've showed you how you can use it to get faster. I wanna show you how you can use it to feel the sense of acceleration and less casting. And so all we did, what we did was we took kind of a thin golf towel and this works great. You know, you could steal a dish towel from the kitchen if your wife doesn't care or, or, or uh, right. husband doesn't care and you can try that out. So all I did was tie it on there. Um, so I'm gonna tie that on there. And then what I'm gonna let you do is I'm gonna let you swing that because what you're gonna to start to feel is you'll feel if you lose the angle, it'll feel really sloppy. And I want you to work on accelerating through the hitting area from your new top of backswing position. Oh, I got you, okay. So let me just kind of imprint this in my mind. And with the golf stick, we're swinging about 10 inches above the yeah. ground or so. And with the towel, maybe even a little more. Yep. Oh, okay, yeah, I got you. So just about there. Yep, that's where you're going. Turn into there and turning through. Now you got to accelerate. Yeah. I say that was wrong. I felt that. Was yeah. Wrong. There it is. Yeah. If I, you, if you have a smoother transition, then yeah. you still have more left over for, for the speed when you need. You don't have to be fast going back. Yeah. Think about the number of guys on tour that almost stop at the top. This is the most work you're going to do. Oh, you really got to use your body if you want to yeah. get it. Let's see if I get 80 on this thing. 77. All right. Now let's take it off. Let's right. just switch yours and then we'll. Yep. Okay. Let's see what you got. So I'm going here. So now, before I got 131, not just, not thinking about it, but now the challenge is from a, from a good golf-wise, a, a good top of back seeing how fast I can get right. it. 120. That looked really 126. Fast. Yeah. 25. Wow, 129. Yeah. 
And here's a new record. That was good. 125. <laughs> so, yeah. so I think the difference is I'm more about like that. There. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. in a better position. Rather than It's more translatable. Slinging. Right? Yeah. So, so there's, there's different kind of sections to this training, right? So yeah. one is just the pure overspeed. Right. Which, which we would probably add the towel back in, into that. Yeah. If they want, if somebody wants to add that to, the, uh -huh. to that, we can do, do that. But this is more of a translation. So this is taking all that speed you built in that other workout into the golf club. So your towel. Yeah. Just because. Uh, it's a good way to feel, isn't it? I mean, I've used the Golf Stick Pro a ton. So, so I've, I've gotten good at swinging the Golf Stick Pro really fast. But I really like this transition stuff we're doing so I can. Yeah, because you can feel. You can't wobble it. Nah. Let it go and snap it back. All right, last swing in this video here, Jay. Accelerate through the hitting area. There we go. There you go. All right, guys. If you're interested in the Golf Stick Pro, go to BeBetterGolf.net. It's a great uh, holiday gift for any of really, really, if your New Year's resolution is to be faster this time next year, and not slower this time next year, get the Golf Stick Pro. It, it's, I think, the best tool for getting faster as long as you use it. You know, if you use it, it'll work. And we have a great Be Better Golf exclusive workout so that you can watch, you follow along with it, which I think is the key for these kind of things rather than just like seeing the tips. Really good. Go to BeBetterGolf.net slash Pro Shop. You'll see it there. Also, um, stay tuned. If you thought that towel thing was cool, there's some really cool things coming out with Golf Stick Pro in 2021 that you're going to want to stay tuned about. See you later, guys. Bye. Cool. Yeah, that was fun, huh? Yeah, that was a good one.